The following program is sponsored by Open Way Church in Cyprus. This is Walking Closely with God, a prayer ministry broadcast outreach of Open Way Church located in Bridgeland, Cyprus, Texas. Please stay tuned as Pastor Greg brings you biblical teaching from the Word of God, giving you clear understanding to help guide and empower you in your close walk with God. At the same time, teaches you to pray effectual prayers that bring answers and solutions to stubborn issues of life. The power of the Word is unveiled. As you stand on it by faith, you then start experiencing manifestations of the promises that enhances a purpose-driven life in Jesus Christ. Praise God. Hallelujah. Welcome to Walking Closely with God. The title for this week's message is Launch Out into the Deep. We're going to be looking at part one of this message. And our Bible reading is taken from the book of Luke, chapter 5, verses 4 and 5. I'll be reading from the King James Version. And it does read, When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, Launch out into the deep and let your nets down for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toyed all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. Simon's answer is something that is not God's will or plan for his children. We have not been called to toil. When you find yourself toiling, know for a certainty you are out of order, out of his will, and not in a place of purpose. I repeat that once again. When you find yourself toiling in the journey of life, Know for a certainty you are out of order, you are out of his will, and not in the place of purpose. Simon's life has been something, fishing has been what he did. It has been in the family line forever, but it was clearly not God's will for him. We've all been called to be successful at whatever it is we do in life. Success in the sight of God is different from this, from success in the sight of men. Success comes from meditating on him day and night. When you spend time enough with God, he gives you clarity as to what your purpose is in life. And when you identify your purpose in life, it leads to good success. Amen. Joshua 1 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy ways prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. So, prosperity and good success comes from spending enough time with God, receiving revelation, direction, guidance, and secrets that you need for the journey of life. Simon had been doing this all his life, doing it in his own ways. He's been using his skills. An experienced fisherman, he has done this like his father taught him. And it's the same like some of us, we've been brought up in certain ways, we've been taught certain things. We are doing something we saw growing up, but most cases is clearly not the ways of God, not the will of God. You have families where everybody from great great grandfather was a lawyer, doctors, engineers, or taking over the family business that goes from one generation to the other. But Sometimes it is not God's will. Yeah, God wants us to be in marketplace. God wants us to be leaders of industry. God wants us to do, you know, things in the global, in the corporate world. But it is for the kingdom purpose. Simon yielded his both for Jesus to do kingdom assignments. Your life has been created for kingdom purpose purposes. Amen? So, God's purpose for our lives is never the same as our own purpose, our own will. 
Some believers have been doing it their own ways all through. They got the skills like Simon. They got the experience. They got the knowledge. They got the connection and the contacts. But are yet not fulfilled. Those successful. Some even are not where they ought to be and wanted to be in life. So the Lord is asking you to launch out into the deep within so that he can give you clarity as to your purpose according to his good thoughts and plans for your life. Let go of the past. Start afresh with the Lord. Let him bring forth greatness in you. Let him bring forth that which he has created you for. It's what the Lord is saying to you today as he's asking you to launch out into the deep. Simon's failure from the previous night had an answer and Jesus spoke to that failure. He gave him an instruction that produced a miraculous abundance beyond Simon's current vessel could handle. His vessel couldn't handle it. His vessel began to sink. He had to call for help to haul in the multitude of fishes that they caught. Why? Because he let go of the past. He let go of his skills. He let go of his experience. He keyed into what Jesus told him to do. When we let him step into the situation, as Simon did, things will definitely change for the better. Simon might have felt defeated while cleaning out his net after an all-night toil without a catch. Without a catch, no dividends, no rewards, no results, and no evidence of toiling, of labor, of all the investment of time, resources, energy, and effort. There are no rewards. It is clearly an indication you are out of order, you are not in his will, and not in a place of purpose. So when Jesus steps in and literally he made a way where there seemed to be no way. He made a way where there seemed to be no way by producing impossible results with net breaking, ship sinking catch. Amen. Amen. If you truly let Jesus step into your life like Simon did, Every contrary situation will line up with God's promises for your life. We are in the past. You've been toiling, barely having much to show for your toil. The Lord is saying, launch out deep. Launch out into the deep with me. Go deeper with me. For the deep, call it unto deep. You can't find God on the shallow level. You have to be Willing to go deep with God, have depth with God in your relationship, in your fellowship, in your work with God, in loving God. You have to go deep. And so he tells us, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your might. That is everything that you are. You have to invest into a relationship with God. So he tells us in Hebrews 6, 13, he said, When God made a promise to Abraham, since he had no one greater by whom to swear, he swore by himself, God is not a man that he should lie, nor son of man that he should repent. His words are forever settled in heaven. So it is your responsibility now to launch out into the deep with him so that his words that are settled in heaven can be unveiled, revealed in your life, through your life, and with your life. So today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as the Israelites did at the water of Maribah, where they were tested in the wilderness. Do not harden your heart. Simon's response Nevertheless, at your word, nevertheless, at the voice of your instruction, Lord, I will. There must be a willingness on your path. 
This must be the posture of your heart. Lord, nevertheless, my experience, my skill set, my knowledge, my connections, my contact, nevertheless, I let go of the past just to obey you. Peter yielded the boat of his life to the Lord to be used. But most importantly, he obeyed and followed the instructions of the Lord, which transformed his life. If you want to experience a glorious transformation in your life, please launch out into the deep in your relationship with God. Do not have a shallow relationship with God. Walk deep with God. Dig deep with God. Invest deeper with God. Amen? It's never too late to yield your life to the Lord as a living sacrifice, letting him use you for the purpose for which he created you. The one that said, I knew you before I formed you. The one who knows the end from the beginning and everything in between. The God that says, my thoughts and plans for you are for good and not evil. To bring you to an expected end. Then, you will see life become so much more meaningful and significant if you will yield, launching out into the deep with this God. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can go to accomplish purpose, the will, and the plans of God for their lives without me, without me, except by me. You have to walk with me. You have to launch out deep with me to be able to fulfill a significant and meaningful purpose for your life. There must be a walk with me. You cannot drive the vehicle of your life when you don't have direction, when you don't have the map or the GPS to the destination, that is to the purpose for which you were created. You are going to have a lot of U-turns, a lot of dead ends, a lot of missing the exit, a lot of missing your left or your right turn. These are all indications of toiling. Why? Because you don't have the GPS to the destination, the end purpose of your life. You don't have it if you are not yielded completely to the Lord, launching out deep in your relationship with him. Amen? You want your life to line up with the truth of God's word and want to see the promises therein revealed in and through your life. Then you must yield to him. The one who says, I use the weak things to shame the strong and the foolish things to shame the wise. Yield to him and be led in his ways. That will bring you to the expected end for which he created you. The expected end that is good and not of evil. He said, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Amen. People are walking blindly around. No direction, no discipline, no discernment. But they believe they are on the right path because according to the ways, the trend and the opinion of the world, they believe they are doing well. But you cannot be on the right path out of God's will, outside God's plan, and definitely outside his purpose for you. Why? Because he knows the best for you. My thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are my ways your ways. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. So if God's ways are higher than ours, Why then is it we insist on choosing our own ways over his? I believe this boils down to pride. It's just pride and God frowns down on pride. But he delights in humility. Humility is a place of submission and surrender. Saying, Lord, not my will, but let your will be done in every area of my life. Amen. Amen. Something in this story, in the book of Luke chapter 5, you know, is that Jesus asked Simon to be brave, to try something different. An invitation for him to die to pride and to walk in humility. He was an experienced fisherman. 
He had the skills. He had the knowledge of the waters. He knew where the fishes were. He, something is done on his all his life. But Jesus asked him to be brave. Forget all you know. Put aside all your knowledge. Put aside your experience and your skills. Be willing to do it my way. Was what Jesus was asking him when Jesus said, launch out into the deep and cast thy net. Amen. Because Jesus had just finished using his boat to preach. So there were a multitude of people still on this on the shore. There were a multitude of people still on the shore. They all knew Peter. They knew he was a, you know, he was a fisherman. It's something he had done. But now here is Jesus telling him to go contrary to what he knew, to do something different, something new, something outside the box, so to speak. Amen. Try something different. Try something different was the instruction Jesus was giving to him. So Simon had to battle with his own doubt as to what this man Jesus was, was talking about when it comes to fishing. What was Jesus talking about? Jesus was asking him to do what was opposite to what he knew, what he had been taught, what he had been doing all his life. So now, what will other people think? He will look like a fool. But Simon had to let go of all of that carnal thought. The ways of God are not our ways. Simon had to make room for something new and abundantly more. Are you willing to make room for something new and abundantly new in your life? Abundantly more in your life? Something the Bible said. He said, for they were astonished and all that were with him for the drought of fishes which they had taken. They were astonished. Are you willing to let go of the past? To walk into something that is astonishing? To walk into something that is glorious? To walk into something that is abundantly more than where you are right now? If you are just willing to launch out into the deep. So we must come to a place where we die to pride, to self, to man, and to the carnal ways. We must die to that. But Simon, I'm sure, he didn't truly understand how his obedient response would change his life. But he did it anyway by saying, nevertheless, at thy word, Lord. Nevertheless, at thy word. Are you willing to make that statement in your life? Lord, nevertheless, I am an accomplished lawyer. I'm an accomplished engineer. I am an accomplished medical personnel. I am an accomplished businessman. I am an accomplished person in my area of specialty, in my field, in my industries. I am accomplished, but Lord, nevertheless, at your word, I want to launch deeper with you. I want to launch deeper with you. No matter how foolish the instruction from the Lord is, as a matter of fact, the more foolish it sounds, the more we should be quick to obey. We must become like children before God. We must yield to God's instruction. It's always for us to come into more, for us to come into what God has for us. He said, what I will do, is beyond, is exceedingly, abundantly, above and beyond all you can ask of me or even comprehend to think about. It's only when we yield. Amen? Are you ready to yield? You must come to a place where you yield. Peter said, nevertheless, at your word, I pray for you that you would yield and launch out deep with God. You will yield and let God use your life, the boat of your life, for end-time kingdom assignment, end-time kingdom purposes. That's what God wants to do. You will yield 
make room for new and for more in your life. I pray that grace for you in Jesus' name. You must love him more. You must have a deeper walk with him. Be passionate about him. Make him first place in your life. Amen. He says, you will search for God with all your heart. And when you do that, you will find me. When you search for me with all your heart. Amen. God says you will love him with all your heart, all your soul and all your mind. You shall love God. Anything less than that is good. You are still a child of God. You are saved. You are going to make eternity. But you are not going to expect to see. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Neither has he entered into the heart of man what God has prepared. When you just love him on the shallow level. When you just do your own thing. Yes, you are saved. You are living for him. You are living a holy and righteous life. You fear him. But you are not launching out into the deep. You are not launching out into the deep. You might have been doing it your way for a long time, but you need a new strategy. Amen? Amen? I'm going to continue this message next week. So, my brother and my sister, you under the sound of my voice, if you don't have a relationship yet with this God, through his son, our Lord Jesus Christ, please repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, today I surrender my life, my will, unto you. I confess of my sins. I repent of them. Have mercy. Forgive me. Write my name in your book of life. And as from today, sit at the throne of my heart as my Lord and over my life as my Savior. I want to have a deep walk with you. I want to launch out into the deep with you. Amen. If you have made that declaration, I welcome you into the kingdom of God. The next thing you want to do, join a church Get yourself a Bible and let them disciple you as a what? As an army, end time army, as an end time army for the Lord. Amen. As for us, Open Way Church, we are virtual. You can check us out on our YouTube channel, Open Way Church, and on Facebook, Open Way Church, Bridgeland. Amen. Every Monday and every Wednesday at 8 p.m., we have bedtime prayer fellowship where we pray apostolic prayer this this time is time of prayers my brother and my sister it is time of prayers we must pray prayer is a place of humility submission and asking god's will to be done in our life seeking his will seeking clarity seeking direction from god so join us amen and if you've not done so please go to our youtube channel and subscribe Click on the notification bell where you get notified every time we come on live. Amen. God wants to do so much more for you like he did for Simon when he launched out into the deep. And God wants to do the very same thing with you. If you are just willing to yield the boat of your life and let him be in charge. Let him be first place in your life. Let him have priority in your life. I know you are accomplished, you are successful in the sight of men, but if you are outside God's will, not in his plans, and definitely not in the place of purpose, then in God's eyes, you are not successful. You've not even done anything you were created for. So go to God in prayer, ask him for clarity, direction as to what your purposes are in life, and God will do it. God bless you. I hope you've been blessed. We love you. Jesus loves you more. I'll be with you again next week for part two of this message. Shalom. God bless. Thank you for listening. This program is made possible by support of listeners like you. Would you consider becoming a monthly partner or making a one-time donation? Your support helps us continue providing these teachings to minister, encourage, and bless the body of Christ across the landscape of this great nation and nations all over the world. To donate or to learn more, please visit www.openwaychurch.com. You can also join us for Bedtime Prayer Fellowship every Monday and Wednesday evening at 8 p.m. through 8.45 p.m., streaming live on Facebook and YouTube. www.facebook.com slash Bridgeland 
or www.youtube.com slash openweightchurch. Our prayer for you is that your faith grows stronger and your walk with God grows deeper because there's victory in Jesus Christ.